Studying the second law of thermodynamics can be a bit daunting. You have been told that a fundamental aspect of reality is the growth of disorder, the gradual destruction of things. Batteries run down, cream and coffee become homogeneous mixture, and ice cubes inevitably melt. This view of the future can be pretty bleak. So how did we discover this intriguing concept? If the essence of reality is a steady march toward total disorder, how did a complexly organized being like human come to be? This notion of a contradiction between the organization of the universe and the natural course of things gained clarity in the 1800s when the concept that entropy is always increasing was formulated. It is a fundamental law of nature that there is a transition from order to disorder because there are many more ways to be disordered. This principle is related to what we call the heat death of the universe. Everything we observe, engines, blazing stars, living organisms, contributes to the overall increase in the entropy of the universe. It is likely that there is a maximum level of entropy, a state of ultimate disorder and chaos. Eventually, we will reach this point and all the glamour of the universe will disappear. The universe will reach equilibrium, a state of maximum chaos in which there is nothing interesting. One of the problems preventing us from fully realizing the implications of the second law of thermodynamics is that people often confuse simplicity with complexity and order with disorder. These are two different axes, two different ways of thinking about something. The concept of increasing entropy pertains to the transition from orderliness to disorderliness, but it does not address the interplay between simplicity and complexity. Currently, this presents a novel scientific inquiry, understanding the journey from low entropy to high entropy and how the laws of physics influence the path, fostering complex structures. One of the difficulties in understanding the origin of life on Earth is that it's not just a randomly occurring complex system. It's very specific. The life we know includes several critical components. You need replication, right? You need Darwinian evolution. We have DNA. We have a genome that replicates not perfectly, but pretty well. Compartmentalization is crucial. Every cell possesses cell walls that isolate the living cell from the external environment. Additionally, Metabolism is essential. It requires low entropy energy that can be utilized to sustain ourselves and subsequently released into the world in a higher entropy form. The challenge lies in determining which of these came first, as they appear interdependent. In the field of origin of life studies, there are two prominent camps of thought. The replication first camp asserts that genetic information, a prerequisite for life, must have come first and subsequently connected to an energy source. Conversely, the metabolism first camp argues that even if genetic information exists, it's meaningless without a functional metabolism. Calling something life requires it to be active, moving around and engaged in metabolism. The intriguing aspect of the metabolism first perspective is that it offers a plausible route emerging from purely physical, non-biological processes. To sustain their orderliness and complexity, Living entities must contribute to the increase in the universe's entropy by harnessing low entropy energy. Several biologists and geologists adopted this notion and made predictions based on it. They posited that life wouldn't spontaneously form in warm environments, challenging Darwin's concept of simply assembling all the necessary components and expecting a creature to emerge, whether it's a small bug or a bacterium. They argued that such a spontaneous emergence of life was improbable because it lacked the necessary increase in entropy. Instead, they proposed that specific biochemical and geological conditions were essential for the occurrence of extended intricate reactions that could eventually give rise to the first living organism. They pondered the ideal conditions for this scenario and surmised that warm hydrothermal vents beneath the ocean with specific chemical balances might be suitable. It is worth noting that at the time this prediction was made, such hydrothermal vents were unknown. However, we have subsequently discovered these sources. The discovery of the lost city formation in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean was made by submersibles exploring the ocean floor. 
This environment revealed exactly the geochemical conditions that had previously been hypothesized as a potential environment for the origin of life. Does this prove the hypothesis? Not conclusively, but it is promising evidence that suggests we are on the right track. The origin of life is one of the most significant unanswered questions in science. However, we are actively working on this question.